Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I am from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland. I teach decorative painting classes of all types, Italian plasters, murals, uh, glazes, patinas. Glazes and patinas are kind of the same thing to a degree. Um, and some, you know, real fun stuff. Today, I'm going to show you a real popular finish I do in one of the workshops, and it's simply just a faux brick treatment. They can be used on interior, exterior surfaces. Now, if you notice the difference, why they look so different from top to bottom, do me a favor, just watch the rest of the video, and you'll understand why. All right, let's get our tools, let's get our materials, and let's get started. So the first thing I've done to get ready for my brick finish is I've base coated the surface using an acrylic eggshell enamel paint. Acrylic paint is made with acrylic resin versus latex, which is made with water. Eggshell is a level of sheen. Um, acrylic paints are more durable than latex. And eggshell is like flat eggshell, satin, semi-gloss, gloss, high gloss. I don't use flat uh, simply because it absorbs the glaze and I don't have time to manipulate it. Semi-gloss is too, sh too shiny, too smooth, and it pushes the glaze off and actually removes more glaze than what we need. What I'm going to need for this today is a black nylon bristle paintbrush. This is my Purdy Peacock, the one I always use. My glaze is going to be the classic wall glaze. Um, classic wall glaze is an acrylic glaze. It's an interior exterior glaze and it tints with paint. The reason it tints with paint, it does not contain any dryers in it, meaning it won't dry. So if you take the glaze and put it on the wall or the surface, it's not going to dry. There's nothing in it to make it dry. So basically if you put it on without the proper ratio of paint, it's going to take forever to dry and it's mainly going to dry through evaporation and it's not even going to be that durable. Uh, so you just take one quarter of your favorite color of paint, you put it into the glaze, a gallon of glaze, and there you have it. So we, in this case, I'm going to use black. And I'm going to brush it on because black and white are going to create a gray mortar. And that's what I want for this. I'm just going to brush it on. See that one dip into the can. And I'm going to get all of this because I don't need to pile it on very thick. I don't want to coat it like a wall with paint. I'm just going to brush it out real quick so it's nice and pretty uniform in coverage. And then I'm just going to take a natural wool, natural wool sea sponge, and I'm going to use the flat side, the cut side of it, and just come in here and pounce it out. And that's going to give me my texture of my mortar. Okay? This is all background work. You're not going to see a lot of this. Maybe 5% if we're lucky. Just tap, tap, put it on, and this is going to break it up. You could use a piece of cheesecloth if you want, um, something with some texture. You want texture. I just use a flat side because it works better, meaning covering, meaning covering more surface area quicker than the round side. Or there really wouldn't be a round side because it's round, so the round area. All right, so I'm just going to cover this whole thing real quick and break it up, break it up, break it up. That's the idea. This thing needs to dry 100% overnight so we can follow on with our next step. Oh, by the way, my sea sponge, I forgot to say, it was damp when I started. I put it in water and wrung it out really, really well so there was no water in it. A dry sponge doesn't work. Okay, let's let this dry overnight. We'll come back and do the next step. So I'll see you when it's dry. Okay, so obviously we're dry. We're ready to move on. going to use my... Uh, masking tape to so start laying out my mortar joints simply going this is my 8 inch masking tape and I'm going to start by laying out my grid now if I'm doing this on a project I will use my level and my roll, ruler or tape to simply make sure everything's straight plumb and level and properly spaced but the good thing is we can do things with this that most masons only dream of because we have no limitations so I first if you notice I laid out my uh, my straight lines but I'm gonna make tumbled bricks or handmade bricks so I'm coming back now and I'm gonna go on the sides and add another piece of tape so make sure that my lines are not even that no two are the same I don't want that look like I don't want to look like I stenciled them. I, I can't stand that effect. I want these to look as natural and real as possible. And I'm going to make them look like they were laid a couple hundred years ago. I'm going to do some old time bricks. 
That's one way. Go this way. And it doesn't take that long once you get used to it. It's like anything else, the more you do it, the more proficient you become, the faster you get. And I know what you're saying. Well, those don't look like bricks. They look more like little tiles. I know. Just slow down and wait for me to get to that point. All right. I mean, we could do shapes like crazy stuff. So I could do a ceiling, gosh, circles, domes, you name it, we can do it. We're not bound by any rules here except the ones of good taste. Okay. I mean, you can see it doesn't take that long to do a section like this. Oh, ho, stick. There we go. All right. Let's deal with those little tiles. Exacto knife or razor knife, what do you want to call it? Look at that. Oops, that's all a stick. I didn't burnish my tape. Burnishing, burn it down, take a credit card or something. New wallpaper roller, get the tape down nice and snug. And here we go, look here we have bricks. Oh. I'm just gonna do a typical pattern that you would normally see on a regular wall. Nothing crazy. Because of time. In the workshop we do fun crazy stuff. We go into a lot more detail about how we do stuff. Alright, I'm going to notice I'm only doing one brick at a time. Get too far ahead of yourself, start cutting, 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 cutting. And you're going to make mistakes. I'm not worried about scratches because it's all going to get covered over with faux stone, acrylic textured plaster into your exterior. And I'm going to make a slight texture on this surface for the brick. So it looks like and feels like a real brick. So spatula, stainless steel trowel, both stainless steel. This is my texture trowel and uh, good old spatula. I'm simply going to get into the faux stone, straight out of the bucket, no color, no tint, just plain white. We'll color it a little bit, and I'm going to apply it to the surface like so. Taking my time because I really didn't push my tape down so well, and I don't want to do that. But it's not a big deal. He saw how fast I could fix it. Should have burnished it down. No biggie. It's only a big deal unless you make it a big deal. Just plaster and paint. Not the end of the world. I'm not trying to make it smooth, but I'm not trying to get it too crazy with texture just yet. That'll come in a minute. Oh, dude, oh, okay, come on. This stuff is thick. Now, photo stone, like I said, into your exterior, you can tint it with pigment, never paint. You tint it with paint, it's going to be a sloppy mess. We can color wash over top of it. We can glaze over top of it. We can layer multiple colors. You're only limited by your imagination with this stuff, okay? Here. 
Okay. That's what the spatula is for to control the material. Notice I'm not using a lot. I didn't put a ton of it on here and just piled it on the wall. It doesn't do you any good. You're just going to work really hard, waste a lot of material. Okay, simple stuff. Taking the trial flat, I'm going to tap into my plaster. Like so. So I'm back on my trowel. Let's get it off of there. Put that away. Put the lid back on the bucket. Fostone only comes in gallons and five and four gallon pails. Four gallon pails because of the weight. So if you're having it ordered, I'm looking for my water bottle. Here we go. Good old fashioned garden sprayer. Pump it up. Light mist. I'm gonna hit my trowel. Shake the excess off. I'm gonna come with a light touch and knock it down. All right. Then we go a little bit more pressure because I'm gonna watch what I'm doing because I'm, I'm controlling what I'm doing, no, nothing else. The reason for the water, wa water, water, smooth. I can go over top of it creates this little cream and I can create very old, old, old worn bricks because that's what I'm going for. Bricks have been out in the weather for decades, if not a century or even longer. Um, okay, now let's play the waiting game. I'll see you tomorrow after this dries. We'll come back, put some color to it. It's obviously dry. So now we're going to color this, make it look like some bricks. Going to need a couple paint brushes. Any old paint brush will do for this. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mist it with water, if I can find my mister bottle, which is right in front of my face. Okay, so I'm going to use a glaze. I'm, again, I'm using a classic wall glaze. I'm going to take two colors, a dark red and a kind of a bright green to make these old looking bricks. So let's see what we get. The water is going to do a couple things that's going to help me get my glaze to move around pretty good. There's one. And let's put some green. Looks like Christmas. I know what you're thinking. It doesn't look anything like any bricks. Again, you're ahead of yourself. Slow down. I'll have my plastic bag handy. Ay, ay, ay. What's going on here today? I'll just use a brush, blend these colors together. Usually I use a plastic bag to mix them, mash them together. I can use a brush, it's no big deal. What we're not trying to do is create a new color. We don't want to over blend. Okay? We want to push the red into the green, the green into the red. We still want to see some of this, some of that. What we don't want to see is a big muddy mess. And I know, well, why do you just pick one color to start with? It was the, uh, the brick red because it'll be too, what is that? Monochromatic. There'll be, you know, I want some variation in my colors here. I want some bread, some red. See the green kind of makes it dirty and old. Antique. You just take one color. Well, that's no fun. You know, that's like government institutional color. We're not trying to do that. Need a little more color down here. See, I can always add some more of this, some more of that. So watch when I put the green in here, watch. And I'll blend it in. See how I get that great brick red that I'm looking for? Put a little bit more here. Okay, take a clean dry rag and let's go in here and tap it dry, break it up. All we're doing is removing some of the excess glaze and removing any brush marks that we created or if we used a piece of plastic to blend, it removes the plastic bag mark. 
or the texture left from the bag. Okay, there we go. Now, this has to dry 100%. Then we're gonna remove the tape and we have some bricks. So I'll see in just a little bit. Okay, so our glaze is dried. It's obviously changed a little bit in color. Remember, that's the thing about paints and glazes. Sometimes what you see is not what you get, meaning always make a dry sample. So let's get this tape off of here. And let's see what we have. Whoops, missed a piece. Come on. All right, we're getting some cool little bricks. Not too horrible. Where's my, uh, need a little picking tool or something to get some of these out of there. Hold on one second. Some of the tape's a little hard to get, so just need to get under it, like so. So remember what I said at the very beginning about that black background? Don't put a whole lot of effort into it. Not a whole lot. Don't stress over it is what I should say. You, always want, to, you want to put a lot of effort into everything, but you don't see a whole lot of it. So don't make yourself crazy. Where are we? Tape everywhere. Get out of there. All right. So they're pretty cool. That's all right. But they're kind of law. They don't have a lot of depth to them, not a lot of dimension to them. I mean, it'll work if you're happy with them. I'm just pulling this tape off so you can get a better idea of what, we, what we're dealing with here. Ah, doesn't want to let go. No, you usually don't want to, I mean, mm, stuff is strong. Okay. Now some areas my bricks, my plaster cracked. Um, didn't do it intentionally. That's kind of the characteristic of the faux stone, that if you put it on too thick, it can crack. If it dries too fast, it can crack. Meaning you could take a hair dryer and force it to dry and it's gonna crack all over the place. Uh, I just let it do its thing. And after you get use the material enough times, you know that, um, you know how thick it has to go before it'll start to crack. All right. This is the messy part, as you can tell, it's going everywhere. So, I just need to get this off of here. But I wanted to pull it off while you were watching because I didn't want you to think I switched it with another board. All right, there we go. Get Man, that tape is strong. Doesn't stick like that when I want it to. Okay, so, not too bad. Ooh, somebody doesn't know how to keep their hands out of the wet plaster. However, not a lot of depth to it. So I'm gonna grab myself a small brush here. Just a little artist brush, nothing fancy. Doesn't have to be expensive because it's gonna get chewed up when we get onto this. So what I'm gonna do, let's put a little shadow and highlights on this. So I'm gonna take some burnt umber on a dry brush. Dry brush meaning I'm gonna load the brush with some paint, take it off on here, and let's pretend our light's coming out. Uh, huh, how about this way? The light source is up here, which means we'll get some shadows up here. So, I'm gonna just, on my brick, because I know what you're saying. Oh, but where the plastic tape pulled off, I can see the edges of the plaster. I know, that's how we're gonna do this. It's gonna help hide it. So watch. All right. I'm not gonna do all of them because that'll take a little bit of time. 
Not a lot, but a little. Plus, I want you to be able to see the difference. If I do all of them, you're not going to see the total difference. all kinds of things we can do to these bricks. We can plaster over them, we can spray paint them, stuff like, meaning like graffiti for a, te for a theater, if you want to create old bricks. See, I don't want my shadows super, super strong, because right, they're shadows, I don't want, I don't want racing lines. And I don't want them to be like too perfectly consistent. I don't want them like exactly the same. I want some nice variation. That's why I take my finger and just kind of wipe over it a little bit. All right. But we're gonna make them look old. We're not done yet. This is just part one. Hmm. So right now, like I'm hitting that area where the white plaster is exposed to get rid of it. I know somebody's probably going, well, why didn't he just tint the plaster or color to match so it doesn't show? because I'm not gonna get the depth of color. I need the white underneath in order to get my colors to pop. All right, so now I'm gonna take a real dry brush and I'm gonna just kinda go over this whole thing. And what it's gonna do, it's, I'm gonna get a bigger brush. That's going to do, excuse the top of my head. they should start to lift, get some lift off, meaning pop. So they'll get some variation to it. So now I'm just taking this real dry brush of black and I'm gonna go over this and I'm just using a black because I'm working one color at a time. Just a little bit, not a lot. Like I got some cool texture here. I'm gonna play with that. All right. Okay. We're finished with that. Let's clean our brush. Now we're going to take and put some highlights on the other side. For the highlights, I'm going to take a little bit of yellow ochre and some white and mix the two together. And that's simply because light is not pure white. It has a little hint of yellow in it. Go look at the sun. Well, don't look at the sun, just look towards the sun in that general area. Pure white would come from like a, what do you call that, LED light? Again, same thing, just a little bit. So I'm again, now I'm taking my yellow white mixture or my highlighting color and I'm going to do the opposite of the shadows because that's how it would work. All right, let's come across here now. Because the black, I use straight with just paint so it dried really fast so I can keep going. All right, let's get in here with some. Whoa, too much. Okay. 
to this row, you should be able to start to really see the difference. Okay. I mean, it's pretty much it. I would just do the whole thing like this and I get these really cool old bricks. So you can see the difference, like this is now like, that's a dimension to it. And these are just kind of like blah, you know. They're okay, they work. So let's talk about where we're gonna use this. Anywhere, columns look really cool, like square pillars in a house, whatever, walls. You can do it on a floor. If you do it on a floor, you're gonna put like 10 coats of polyurethane on this of a good thick floor grade polyurethane because it's going to get walked on and it's going to be abused. So all kinds of stuff, you know, you got all kinds of possibilities. And just think it has, I mean, this whole thing here probably weighs half of one brick, you know, it's hardly anything to it. So, we're not bound by a lot of the rules that uh, the real stuff's bound by. You know, we can go in and we can put a crack in here if we want. But like if this was a real, you know, if I want to go into, uh, I'm trying to think, I can't think today. Some house, a building, restaurant, they want to put brick up. By the time they do that, I can be done and in and out with this. And I don't have to worry about the floor supporting the weight of my bricks. So yeah, we can put a little crack right here. You can go on and on and on and on. Remember, you're only limited by your imagination. Oops, got a little carried away here. But you get the idea now. Hopefully you get a little excited and want to go out and do something. Now, if you're doing this outside, which you totally can, just be careful. Make sure all the materials that you use are rated for exterior use. There you go. I'm not going to finish it. You get the idea. I wanted you to really see the difference. Okay. I want to thank you for watching. My name is Ron Lehman. I'm from Defoe School in Frederick, Maryland. Have a great day.